Hello, let's say this is your data. It can be any shape data. For make this example simple, I will use circle shape data distribution. Let's say this data has couple of outliers. Outlier number one and outlier number two. That blue line, it is dominating data distribution. It is circle shape data distribution. 99% of data points are nearby this distribution line. Next, we are passing our data into autoencoder. Autoencoder has three main parts, encoder, bottleneck and decoder. So we are passing our data into encoder, that is the input to autoencoder. In the encoder part, we still have original data dimensions. What encoder does, it transfers this input data to the bottleneck part and this bottleneck part has a very special purpose, it compresses input data. In our example, if input data has two dimensions, x and i, then bottleneck can compress it into one dimension. Let's say this compressed data is this line in the middle of our autoencoder. And the last part of autoencoder is decoder. The result of bottleneck is getting passed to the decoder part. So this is our decoder in autoencoder structure. Finally, what decoder does? It does its best to revert the compressed representation into the original data distribution. In other words, the coder tries to reconstruct compressed data into original representation. So this is our decoded data, almost the same we had on the left as original data. As a result of this, all data points have its own reconstruction error. One of these has a high reconstruction error, while other ones low. Keeping in mind that all data points lie on the dominating data distribution line, these data points which were along this line has low distribution error, and these ones which were far away this distribution line has high reconstruction error, and that ones with high reconstruction error are our outliers. Now, as you know quite a lot about autoencoders, let's jump to do some hands-on. Hi all, today we are going to talk about how to find outliers in your data with deep learning with autoencoder. It is very simple to do and very quickly to implement, so let's start to do it right now. So for this we will need just a couple of dependencies. Okay, first of all we importing a pandas as pd, because at the end of this tutorial we will structure our data frame with our results. Next to that we are using um, tensorflow. Um, as TF, because with the help of TensorFlow, we will define how our encoder and decoder will look like, and by having this, we will set up our autoencoder. And next to that, we are going to use um, Matplotlib for some visualization of our data to understand what is going on. So we are using a matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Okay? Okay, no errors in here. And if you are interested in what version of TensorFlow I'm using, it is TensorFlow 2.10. Okay. Um, next thing, what we are going to do is to load our data. And for this tutorial, I'm loading our data from CSV file, which is in my local computer. It is data.csv. And I'm using columns, um, let's say it is x, and I. And okay, how our data is look like. Yeah, we have data and we have X feature and I feature. So we said two dimensions. And if you're interested in what is the shape of our data, we can check it. We have uh, 1000 records and a couple of them are outliers. And I think 99% of this data is a normal data. And just a few of them uh, outliers. So our autoencoder will try to recognize these two outliers. Okay, and before doing all the stuff, I think it's a good idea to visualize with scatter plot our data. Okay, x equal data x and i equal our data i. And I like color black, let's say size equal to 7, and let's plot it. Okay, and I want to explain what the data is about. You can see this circle. 
So this circle is like a normal data pattern. What is inside the circle? Not inside, what is along this circle? This is a normal data. And what is in the center of this circle is outlier. And what is in the corner of this plot is also outlier. So we have two outliers in our data. This is number one, and here is outlier number two. And if you check the data frame of our data, the last two uh, records are outliers. Here's a coordinate zero, zero. This is in the center of the circle. And here's um, two and two. This is um, in the corner of this plot. So we have two outliers and we'll train our autoencoder to recognize these outliers, okay? So before doing that, we need to prepare our data. So we first of all, we need to convert our data frame to tensor. Why we are doing this? Because TensorFlow neural network need to able to recognize and read the input data. So input data should be in tensor format, okay? So data tensor equal TensorFlow convert to tensor. And what, what we are putting here, we are putting data, okay? Here's our data. And I need to be sure that I have a numerical data to avoid any errors, okay? No errors in here. So an autoencoder tries to learn a good encoding for a given data set. So here's our data set. And since most data points in the data set are not outliers, the autoencoder will be influenced by most normal data, what is in, along the circle line. And points should be performed well on this most of data. And outlier is something that the autoencoder has not seen often during training. As you guess, this one and this point, this is what autoencoders doesn't seen often. So it might have trouble finding a good encoding for them. So you'll see it a little bit later. Just I want to explain what we will do. Okay, and now we are ready um, to define and train a simple autoencoder that compresses the two-dimensional data to one-dimension vector. Okay, and before doing that, we need to shuffle our data. So, so shuffle points equal to TensorFlow, random, shuffle. And what we need to shuffle? We need to shuffle what is inside our tensor. Working good. Next thing, what we are going to do is to set up how our encoder will look like. Encoder equal to TensorFlow Keras sequential. And here we will define the neural network with a couple of layers and that will be in encoder part. In this neural network, we will train our autoencoder and encoder will try to find patterns in our data. Okay, so TensorFlow, Keras, layers. So we are defining layers in our neural network in the encoder part. And the layer type is dense. How many nodes we are going to use? You can uh, try as you want, I'm using a 16. Actuation equal to ReLU. And how many layers I need to have? It depends on you. Maybe it's just three of them, maybe four of them. It depends on you. I'm using a three of them. And just pay attention to the last line in encoder. We need to define the last layer. So layers, dense. And how many nodes we are going to use in the last layer? We are going to use the only one node because we need to get a one dimension output. So this is encoder part. And what about the coder? The coder is very similar, but we have only one difference. So we have exactly the same neural network structure, but only one difference that we are changing the dimension of the output. Okay, and what is the dimension of the output we need to have? If we had dimension equal to one in, at the end of encoder, so the coder is getting everything back to normal 2D plot. That means the coder will try to revert the output of encoder to 
two dimensional space. So we're using a two as the output from the decoder part. So again, coming back to two D plot. That's good. So if we have encoder and decoder, now we can to combine it and have our auto encoder. So auto encoder equal to TensorFlow keras sequential and what we are passing in our autoencoder, it is encoder and decoder. Okay, so far so good. So what we did so far, we have our input data that is suitable for our autoencoder. We are having encoder, we are having decoder, we are having autoencoder. And now we are ready to train our autoencoder. So autoencoder compile. So when we are training uh, any neural network or machine learning model, we always need to select what the loss function we're going to use. I'm using um, mean square error. It's simple like that, MSE, okay? And the goal is that output is close to the same input to check if the model is generalizing good. So autoencoder fit, and what we need to fit in our training process. So x equal to shufflet, I'm just pasting, and i equal to, okay, it's also shuffle points, and validation split equal to 0 0.2, epochs, okay, it is a period of the training process, okay, I think 5 countries is more than enough, you can play with these hyperparameters, this is like, that you want to use. Okay, three, two, one, and let's start to um, training. Perfect. We have our autoencoder trained by our input data, and now we should able to recognize outliers. So here's the final step in our tutorial. So we can now to put our data points into autoencoder. And this is our reconstructed points. And what is reconstructed points? Reconstructed points is like a result of autoencoders because autoencoder, what it is doing, it tries to revert back to two dimensional space, the output of encoder. And reconstructed points is the result how our autoencoder is performing. Autoencoder. And what we are passing into autoencoder? I think we need to pass our data tensor from here. Okay, no errors. Okay, what does look like our reconstructed points? Okay, it is TensorFlow tensor. It's a shape of 1002. It's a two dimensional space and float number uh, as data type. Perfect, very good. So let's look how our reconstruction is look like. So we're using a matplotlib scatter. Okay, so we got a very interesting shape. So I want to explain a little bit what's this going on right here. We have our raw data. Raw data that, as you can see, in black dots. It is the circle, and here's the outlier, and here's the outlier number two. And here's the reconstructed points. This is the result what autoencoder did. And as you can see, autoencoder tried to revert back everything to two-dimensional space and it tries to redraw this circle again from the output of encoder. And as you can see, no outliers is in the red dots. That means these two outliers, this is outlier number one and outlier number two, are inside somewhere this um, red line. It's among of these red dots. I think this, maybe this outlier is false somewhere here 
and this outlier falls somewhere here on the red line among the red dots okay that is very interesting and how we can to get benefit of that um the autoencoder puts these two outliers on its learned circle approximation as well as normal data points so that's meaning that these two outliers moved quite a lot because both of them were way far away from the circle before so let's print some numbers and you can see what is going on so reconstruction errors so we are using tensorflow reduce sum and then what we need to pass is auto encoder data tensor minus data tensor in square x is equal to one and this is a mean square error okay no errors is in here as i mentioned before why we need to use a pandas so now we can to define our data frame with our result and you get understand why we need this autoencoder so data frame equal to pandas data frame and what is inside inside we have um x equal to data values and i also equal to data i and values and reconstruction error equal to reconstruction error fine okay that is very interesting and now i want to keep your attention into one thing let's say i want to see the last 10 records as you can see reconstruction error is something like the efforts that auto encoders put into inside its engine to revert the output of encoder back to two-dimensional space as you can see for most of them the reconstruction error is quite small because uh, when we had a circle pattern there are almost zero efforts to coming back to circle but if we have these outliers we are having much bigger effort to put it to the circle pattern so you can automate your algorithm to define what are outliers in your data sets there are a couple of approaches so how can to automate outliers extraction from our data set you can play with pandas data frame and here are my thoughts on that so here's our data frame from handsome part we have some outliers at the bottom right here and rest of data points are good data the main question how to automatically flag outliers in our data I suggest to think about these two approaches. The first one, what if our outliers will be that ones which has a reconstruction error higher than sum of average and three times standard deviation of our data points. Here's the mean average and here is standard deviation in this formula. The second approach, you can define your own custom numerical threshold and everything what is about this threshold will be flagged as outliers. You are the boss here, that's your choice. That's all what I wanted to say to you today, subscribe to the channel to get more useful videos in future and see you there.